I'd like to take a minute to demo how to screen back an image for text and then to screen back text for an image. And I'll just use this image I pulled off the Open Graphic Arts website. Um, it is an image taken in Bruges, and so when I use my type tool, I'll just type Bruges. Um, and it will work just like we did in the lecture, just be a different image in a different city. So I'm going to go ahead and reset my workspace, window, workspace, and I'm going to use Essentials, so I'll reset Essentials. And then I'm going to use the Layers panel and the Properties panel to make these adjustments. So in order for this to work, we need to be able to apply an adjustment and a type layer. And so let's get our assets together first. I have my picture that I'm going to desaturate via a Levels adjustment. And then I also want to use the Type tool. And so the Type tool is about two-thirds of the way down on your Tools panel. If you go ahead and click on it, you can simply just click, and you're creating what's called Point Type. And then you can type Bruges, or wherever town you're going to. B-R-U-G-E-S is how you spell that. It's really small though, and I can't see it. So I'm going to use my options bar up here at the top of the screen. And it changes depending on what tool you have selected. And so we can choose a different typeface. And so I'm going to choose maybe this weird kind of one there. And then I'm going to choose a really big size and see if I can make it bigger. It's still not big enough, and so I'm going to type let's say 250 and see if that's big enough. And we'll go with that. And then I do not like the typeface, so we'll try making it lowercase. And I still like that, so it's fine. Uh, put it somewhere on the image. And, and then if you want to experiment, click on the type tool, click on your text, and then highlight it with your text cursor, and try to change the color to find a color that looks good on the background. It's almost impossible to find one color that works well on a colorful background because the colors keep changing behind the words. And so one option that we could do is we could just choose the color that we like or we think would look nice in this image. And so I'll highlight my text again. I'm going to use my picker. I'm actually going to choose a color that's in the image and see if I can find a nice bright color that will work. We can always go back because you can edit text, and so I'll leave it there for now and see what happens. Now, you can use a levels adjustment on your image layer. So you'll select the image layer, hit the new adjustment layer icon, and then choose levels. Whenever you're doing a levels adjustment, you'll use the properties panel. And my recommendation is before you do anything, drag the left slider over until where the image starts and the right white slider over to the left to where your histogram starts, just so that you're getting good tonal range in your image. Then you can take the mid-tone slider and slide it to the right to make it darker, and my blue text really pops then. Or you can slide it to the left to desaturate the image, and so now my color doesn't work with the background. And so I have a choice. I can leave it and desaturate it and make the text the emphasis, but I'd have to go back and change my text so it actually stands out. So maybe I need to choose a dark blue color. Or I could have gone darker and I could have made the whole image darker so that my light text pops off of it. Now, I don't think this is the best option. It kind of worked for that Bryce Canyon example in the lecture, but it doesn't always work. And so what I want to do is I want to show you what I think is usually a better option, is we can take the image, and actually, I think we actually could use a, a levels adjustment here for the whole image. So we'll make like a slight adjustment on the whole image. There we go. Um, but in addition to that, I want to make a levels adjustment of the text. And so we have the same assets, we have a background picture, and we have text. But this time, instead of applying the levels adjustment to kind of wash the picture out, we're going to apply the levels adjustment to wash the text out. And so you need to format your text and choose your typeface and your size and your placement, because you will not be able to change those after you apply the levels adjustment, unless you redo the whole thing. But the color doesn't matter because the color is going to disappear. Once you have that, you can command click the T icon, let me zoom in here, command click if you're on a Mac like I am, or control click the T icon, and it will load your text as a selection. Turn the layer off, and now we want to apply a levels adjustment just to that part of the image. And so now, it doesn't look like anything happened, but if we go to the properties panel, we can now move the slider on the layers, not the layers, the levels panel across. You can even see how we have this gap here. This is the first image you can actually see the gap. When you have a histogram, 
you want to move your dark slider over and your white slider over, and then you can adjust the midtones. If you don't like it, you can always make some adjustments. Um, but what you want to do is you want to decrease the saturation or the contrast in the area that's been selected so that, let's close this window out, so that your text can then stand out on the image. I'd like you to give that a try. It's one of the activities that you're going to do if you do the Lesson 11 Skills Practice, but I also think it's a good skill set to have. You don't even have to do it with, with um, pictures, I'm sorry, with type. If we reset our workspace and we go back to the Layers panel, if you make a selection, any selection, you can do this, but you could use like the Shape tool and then you can choose Custom Shape and choose a fun custom shape up here. Let's do, let's do a heart because I believe it is Valentine's Day today when I'm recording this. And so you can make a shape and then you can load the shape as a, uh, as pixels if you want to, or actually let me undo that. Before you make the shape, tell it that you want to make a path. And then you can load your path as a selection. And then now that you have a selection, you can go back to layer zero and apply your levels and do the same thing. Slide it to the right until you create a less saturated version. You can even slide it to the right if you want it to be darker. And you can create kind of cool fun effects uh, using the levels.